Okay, welcome to Spiked Up, episode two. Uh, as you can see, we're now, <laughs> can't be at the training ground anymore, shelter <laughs> in place, so Darren and I are playing by the rules. Um, and um, yeah, I miss you, Darren. It was, it was fun being out there. I've, I've been cooped up in the house. And, um, you know, as you can see, I even cut my own hair. I had my kids cut my hair. Uh, so I am in full quarantine mode. How are you holding up? Yeah, no, it's uh, it's crazy, isn't it? I miss those mannequins that we had at the training ground. I know. Ground. So, I, know. I wish I had one <laughs> behind me. I have this. It's uh, crazy. They got a lovely dresser behind you there. I'm impressed with the the dresser <laughs> and the nice plates that you have. So, if you really want to know, this is episode two for Darren and I, version like three point five, because we've we've tried this a few times. Technical difficulties. I think. My kids have been watching so much Netflix. My wife's been working that my, my internet is like probably smoking right there. So I've got as close to the router as I can. And so this was my nice backdrop with the potpourri and, and the sets and everything. So I get to show my backdrop off. This is the one I finally got it <laughs> the right way around. My step and repeat. And if I just go like this, yeah. like Mickey Mouse, <laughs> my ears. I've got Miggy and Joseph bobbleheads behind me and then I want to show you this, Matt. You'll like this. So, for the oh, guys yeah. uh, watching, we have a pop-up pub. Pop-up pub. Our sort of monthly, we do it at the training ground. And Pat, my assistant, got me a King Henry VIII uh, <laughs> official ye olde English pub sign. So, I've got it in my room here. That, uh, that's, it's very beautiful. I, didn't, uh, I don't know anything about King Henry VIII, so maybe you'll have to fill me in one day on that. With the, the... He's the one with the wives, six wives. <laughs> Remember, divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. <laughs> there you go. History lesson. <laughs> yeah. And then, me, yeah, I've got my nice set here. And then uh, I thought I'd, I'd joke with, with my, my haircut that it, you can tell was a do it at home. Someone told me, I don't know if you'll know who this is, is I don't know King Henry, you may not know Randy Orton from WWE. Someone said, Matt, you look like Randy Orton if he didn't work out and had no muscles. <laughs> 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 so that's the look I'm going for these days. It's, it's great. But hey, let's start. I think, you know, we'd be remiss if we didn't start without, you know, um, a couple things. Thanking. Um, our supporters for the great feedback we got last week and, and just know we had a lot of fun with it. Um, so I, I could not get over all the kind words on that. And also um, I'll let you take it from here, but I, I wanted to make sure we said thank you to all the people on the front lines and, and you know, um, hopefully people have seen the billboards, but we're, we're, we really want to thank, um, you know, all our frontline workers and, um, and people like, we're just, it, it's so valuable to us and, and I can't even imagine, yeah, I'm stuck in here every day and it's, and it's miserable, but I can only imagine what their day to day is. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, we, um, we put the billboard campaign out yesterday. So the branding is, you know, United We Conquer. So taking our mantra and tweaking it slightly, but it's, you know, it's a recognition of the fantastic work frontline heroes are doing. Plus those essential workers that are going out there. Like you said, we're feeling sorry for ourselves because we're stuck inside in our houses, but, you know, they're doing stuff that is, you know, out there on the front line. So, you know, again, for us, it's, it's our way of trying to give back to the community. Obviously, we've got an amazing owner in Arthur Blank who put forward the 5.4 million to try and help across, you know, Atlanta and the metro area and even out in Montana where we have our ranches. But for us, you know, Soccer in the Streets, one of our big partners, we've given them funding, 85,000, because they've got to keep going while all this is going on. You know, so it's just our way of, of trying to show our support and it's something that you know we all recognize this is bigger than sport this is about all of us working together to to get through this and you know there'll be brighter days on the other side yeah let's hope and 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 i know there will um yeah i was even I was even telling our sponsorship team i saw some georgia power linemen you know kind of tweaking the power out there and you just don't think about you know all the things that still have to go on um you know that as you're quarantined in this. So, so thanks to that. Um, and, and again, thanks for the great support. Um, you know, the great comments. Uh, we really appreciate doing this and hopefully we can give you a, a little bit of joy and a little bit of fun um, each week uh, on, on this. So uh, yeah, we showed the pop-up sign. I, might, I wanted to make sure we showed that. And then, you know, we tried to do this on Tuesday. So we were gonna say who we thought won the NCAA March Madness. Um, and I still think we should go in that. And I want you to tell your story about um, 
that you told me about your bracket that you started, which is so funny because one of the first things when I met you is that you came over and told me you ran a bracket. And I'm like, how did you even know college basketball? That was great. Yeah, look, I mean, so look, those people who don't know, I went to university here. I went for a year to West Virginia University. So that's for another podcast where me as an 18 year old came over to America to uh, Morgantown. <laughs> so <laughs> that was definitely uh, an interesting uh, experience. And I transferred to Brown. So I still think I'm the only person in history that went from WVU to Brown to the Ivy League after one year. But for me, like my most fun sporting experience in America was college basketball. And what I liken it to, Matt, is we have the Grand National. So the Grand National is the big race in England. It's a four and a three quarter mile steeplechase. And it like the whole country stops to watch the race. Everybody bets. There's 40 horses in it. And it was amazing. Last weekend, it should have been the Grand National. And they actually ran a virtual Grand National on TV and the ratings were through the roof because everyone's desperately at home. So they're betting on pretend horses in a virtual Grand National. So what I love about the bracket is, you know, you have to fill it out. Everyone has their view. Um, so when I was in England, I was at West Brom. Um, there was a guy who was the chief exec of Derby, who is a guy called Tom Vick, who's now the Panthers president. And a guy, Jez Moxie, was the chief exec of Wolves, who played high school basketball. So we three of us loved basketball. We did a bracket competition and the loser had to buy dinner for the others. So I lost, which ended up being a theme for this tournament throughout the years. So when I lost, so myself and Faith at the time, you know, we were in Warsaw, which is not a great area of England. Um, we were able to get on an American base, which is pretty cool because it's like you go into it and then you suddenly start driving on the right. They make it like you're in America. It's <laughs> unbelievable, the difference. <laughs> So we went there, we got like corn dogs and all that sort nice. of American, you know, traditional food. And we did our, our wooden spoon dinner. So they came over with their spouses and we just, you know, had corn dogs and, and chatted. As the group grew, so next year, Ivan Gazidis, who's the chief exec at the time of Arsenal, joins in. We then got Tom Werner, who's the um, president of the Red Sox and of Liverpool, uh, Elliot Short, who used to, um, who used to own uh, Sunderland. It just grew and grew. And by, I think the, re the time we knew that it had jumped the shark was, it might have been the eighth year, and Elliot Short lost. And so he hosted the, the Wooden Spoon Dinner with partners. So there's about 24 of us turned up to his Mayfair Gentlemen's Club in London. And for, for you know, you know England's old-fashioned, so you have these clubs that are dining clubs that it's really exclusive to get in. And you'll be in Mayfair and you won't even know it's a dining club. It's just like a, an ordinary door. So we all got the address and I'm turning up with Faith and we're looking and is this the door? And then, you know, the butler opens it. Here we go, sir. I remember walking through and Sir Norman Foster's just sitting in the, in the, um, in the like waiting area. Sir Norman Foster, legendary architect in England, designed, you know, all of the big buildings that you have in central London. So anyway, we go in there and there's 24 of us sitting around this room and they're bringing out champagne. And then we get the menus and this is how you know it's an old school gentleman's club because the women's menus doesn't have the prices on because you don't want to offend the women with prices. The men's all have the prices and you could see everybody sitting around the room. Thought Bubble was like, oh my goodness, how expensive is this meal going to be? It's going to be at least five grand by the time they finish. I can't ever lose this tournament again. Yeah, so no. so uh, from then on, you just always pick the favorites because you don't want to lose it. I know. Yeah, that, that is great. And, and, I think I was joking with you. I think my bank account is in so much better shape because uh, there's no master's pool. There's no <laughs> brackets. <laughs> thing about it. You know, it's like, it, it is, it is real. I, it's funny you mentioned the virtual Grand National because I, I was so bored without sports the other day. I found myself watching sumo wrestling. They were just like live streaming it. And <laughs> I'm like, what am I doing? I need sports back. I, I know we miss it. And, um, well, it, I was thinking about that, Matt. We, you and I, we should sort of brainstorm and come up with a concept because clearly out there, you know, the marble run, there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a niche there for us to create content that people can bet on. And if we own it, then <laughs> we could be millionaires. So here's my idea. Like James and Edmund, the twins, they're pretty well matched in soccer. We could start the TPL. So instead of the EPL, it's the Twins Premier League. We'll have games in the back garden. We'll, you know, they can put on a Spurs shirt against Liverpool We'll get Mike Conti or Kevin Egan to do the, the voiceover. I'm telling that. you, it's evenly matched. It could be 
could be our way to a fortune. We could be millionaires. I I, I'm in. I am in. I am. I am in. We'll figure out a way how to stream that. That would be. Awesome. I, I, that would be great. That would be great. I, I love that concept, and I love the idea of my, Mike and, and Kevin and Dan and Jill calling that. That would be <laughs> pure amazing. Um, so, hey, I thought you know we did get a couple of comments um, about you know wanting to talk a little soccer too um, when we have fun. Um, do you want to give like an update on kind of the team and, and the league? And I mean, I know not a lot has changed, but um, just maybe even some of our guys that are returning from injuries and good news on that. Yeah, look, I think from a, you know, what's happening, we're no different from, you know, the other leagues and this yeah. whole country where we're waiting to see, see what's going to happen. And obviously the most important thing is always going to be coming back fit and healthy. So, you know, that is the number one priority. So we're in a little bit of a holding pattern. Um, I've said it before, the good thing for, for Major League Soccer is we had a lot of runway because, you know, our season wasn't planning to be finishing till November. We've obviously got the ability to go back to that old schedule like, the year we won it in 2018 and go through to the end of December. So, you know, there's a lot of room for us to be innovative and, you know, try and fit the season in. So we feel, you know, pretty confident at, at the moment that at least compared to other leagues, particularly in Europe, where they're having real difficulties, we don't face that. On the injury front, look, the one thing this time has given us is, you know, whether it's Miles Robinson, um, Franco Escobar, uh, even, you know, Rosetto, who got a knock in the game against Nashville, we are able to get them back fit and healthy when we get the green light. So the one good thing is it's let us sort of have those players get ready. Um, so they'll be 100% once we get back. So that's the good news in that front. And I think one cool thing that, that fans might be interested in, um, just what a, how the, you know, academy and, and technical side have, have, have you know, kind of kept the, kept in touch and, and you know, delivered bikes and, and doing, you know, virtual drills with the academy and things like that. I think that, I think that was pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah, no, it's been really interesting. And, and, you know, it's been fascinating actually from, you know, we gave the, for example, so we gave the spin bikes from the training ground, delivered it to all the, the players. Um, they've obviously got their personal programs that they're working on. Um, but what's been really interesting is the, it's the camaraderie and the um, more on the mental side of things that I think is tougher for the players. And, uh, and what we found now, we're doing it twice a week, or we may increase it, is, you know, a Zoom technical session. So if you think about it, how do you do that when everyone's separate? But basically, we, whether they've got a garage or they can go into their um, backyard or even in their, you know, lounge in their apartments, they need a small area. We give them instructions on the technical work we're going to do, and then they're on a Zoom call while they're doing it. And the beauty of that is there's still the banter between the players. And to be honest, that's what the players are missing, that interaction, that, that banter. So we're trying yeah. to find ways to, to do that. On the academy side, we've done some cool initiatives where we've been using our contacts. So a good example, Jack Collison, who is our under-17s head coach. He's got, he used to be at um, a West Ham player. So we did a session where we had all the players from, I think it was the 17s and 15s. They're in a conference call, Zoom conference call together. And then Mark Noble, who's the captain of West Ham, played over 500 EPL appearances. He dropped in and was just chatting with them in terms of questions they had. parky has been doing it with some of our academy groups. So it's been really good seeing that way of being innovative and, and just trying to keep that contact between the, the players and the band to going. I know. That's, that's the part I miss the most. I, I, say, I tell people all the time, like, I, I want to go into the office and, you know, just tell jokes, laugh, talk about, you know, I, it, it, that, that was, that's the best part of the training. I mean, it, you know. I mean, other than us winning and doing great things, but I, I, you know, that's why the Zoom calls are so important. You know, I do a, I do a happy hour, you know, or really like a, after the kids go to bed with, with all my college and, and, and you know, uh, friends um, that I've met afterwards. And, and I've kind of connected the two groups because I just miss that so much. So, yeah, you know, I, I, I was wondering, have you done that with any of your mates back in, in London or any of your, your, your mates here? Yeah, I mean, London, it's, we've got a bit of a difference with the time, yeah. time change, so. <laughs> They're happy, happy hours right now, yeah. Their happy hours still noon, so. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but no, but it's, it's fascinating, isn't it? I mean, everyone's going through it, that, that human interaction. I've never been so disappointed that we couldn't do this podcast. I know. In person. Like, we can do it via Zoom, but it was just, I was quite excited about actually getting to chat to someone <laughs> other than 
<laughs> faith in the kids actually in person. I know. I, I, I completely agree. Um, one other soccer question that I, that I thought was pretty good that someone asked, um, and I think you have a pretty fun story that relates to it that you told me um, about like the entire process of scouting, signing a player, and then I thought what I've seen, when I, I'm not one of my favorite things to see in the training ground is when the the deal's almost done and the agent comes to meet with you and you just, you're like, oh, you look in the, you can look through your window and you're like, oh, they're, they're negotiating on that final, you know, couple cents here and there. So I thought it might be, you know, you could give us a, a little bit of insight on that because that fascinates me. And I, I, you'll tell me as much as that when I, I you can, when I ask, because I, that is, I think that is something that not everyone gets to experience. Yeah, so, I mean, it's been interesting for us as a club because you think about it when we started and it was really me, Carlos, and then Lucy Rushton, who's our, our head of technical scouting. So, you know, she has the data analytics background. You know, it was just the three of us and it was a very lean uh, uh, group and we were doing our best, obviously, through the contacts that, that I had for my previous roles to, you know, use scouting networks and use contacts. So, and that's how we were sort of building the team. It's a little bit more sophisticated now because we just, we're a bigger club. And so we'll use a, a number of ways to get players on our radar. And it will be us actively scouting them through specific leagues that we feel are the most appropriate in terms of recruiting for Major League Soccer or even perhaps clubs that we feel play in a similar style. Um, we'll have sometimes, you know, agents will put in a player and uh, increasingly now we drive and find players rather than agent led, but there'll be the odd player that, that an agent brings and we, we look at and we think, yeah, we quite like him. And the way it works is it will go through our various layers until it gets to Carlos. And then Carlos will be the sort of the final checkpoint before it comes to, to myself. And then we're looking at, you know, is this a player for us? You know, we have the, all the data together, all the background, all the scouts views. Carlos and I will talk about him. We've got to look at, can he fit into the, the salary cap? You know, how is that going to work in terms of our player budget, et cetera? Um, social media, we'll be looking at everything we can do from a character background. Um, and then we'll be saying, okay, is this someone that we want to go forward with? And obviously technical staff are involved. Frank's looking at him. Frank's saying, yeah, you know, this is someone that I could see could fit in with the club. So, you know, that's the level that we get to. But where, where it's different with soccer compared to your typical negotiation is you've always got three parties involved. So there's always club A, you know, there's ourselves, there's club B. And then there's a the player. And obviously, you've got to do a deal with the club. You've also got to do a deal with the player. And it's a, it's a three-way process. So it always creates uh, interesting wrinkles as you're trying to get a deal done because there's only so much money in the pot. And ultimately, you know, if we've agreed a fee of X, then, you know, if we have to pay more, then the player's got to take less. And that's where yeah. it gets interesting. Where I'm really lucky is the two clubs I worked at before, West Bromwich Albion and Tottenham Hotspur. So... Everyone knows Daniel Levy at Tottenham. He's quite famous for being a tough negotiator. But I'll be honest, Jeremy Peace, who was the owner of um, and the chairman of West Bromwich Albion, he, a little bit under the radar, he was just as tough as Daniel. Um, and it was great training, and I think, for me to have gone through those two clubs in terms of seeing how you know, negotiations unfolded and, and trying to, to get the best deal for the club. But also, you don't want to always you know, crush the opposition. So there's a fine line between uh, leaving some, I think actually Arthur does it quite well at Home Depot. You've got to leave some blood in the patient. You can't just take everything <laughs> because you're going to have to come back at some stage. Sure. Stop as a small world. So the one that I always remember quite early on, so I'm at West Brom. It's my second transfer window. And we were signing a goalkeeper called Michael Danik from a Czech club, uh, Victoria Pilsen. And we were taking him on loan. So bear in mind, this is only a temporary loan. It's a loan for six months. Then we were negotiating an extension of that loan. And then if after 12 months we wanted to sign it permanently, there was a permanent deal. So we'd started negotiating with the Czech club. They'd actually flown over. We were negotiating at the training ground. It was about two o'clock. And I'd booked seven o'clock meal at a lovely Italian in Birmingham. So I was already getting quite excited. It was a nice restaurant. I figured seven o'clock was safe. We had five hours to get this loan deal negotiated. And it got to about 9.30 at night and we still haven't finished the negotiation. So everyone's starving hungry and we couldn't agree. We, we thought we got it sold. So think about this, Matt. So you have a loan, then a permanent deal. Then on the permanent deal, you have what's known as a sell-on. 
So that is, if we were to, first of all, sign him permanently, and then if we were to sell him for a profit, what percentage should the Czech club get? And we couldn't agree this, you know, Jeremy wouldn't go lower than 10%. You know, he's like, not giving him more than 10%, we've given on other things. Their owner wouldn't move from 20%. And I'm getting really frustrated, I'm starving, hungry. The restaurant's going to start, you know, stop taking orders at 10 o'clock. I'm like, how can we sort of resolve this log jam? And I had a brain weave. So I went next door to our kit room and I got, you know, if you remember West Brom, a famous blue and white stripes. I got the number 10 shirt, the number 15 shirt, and the number 20 shirt. I came into the room and I said, right, I'm going to put these face down. So there's three shirts, mix them up randomly. So you what guys happy. I'm then going to go and get the security guard and he's going to pick one. And whatever he picks, that'll be the sell-on percentage. And the two owners, you know, Jeremy and the owner looked and said, okay, we'll go for that. So I go to get the security guard. And this is like, I say, it's now 9.45, I'm up against time. And he's like, what the heck's going on? I was like, look, I'm taking you in there. And let me tell you, if you pick the 20, you're going to be sacked because <laughs> Jeremy's definitely going to kick you out. Anyway, he came in and thank goodness he picked the 15. So everyone nice. was happy. Then in the middle. Yeah, so we met in the middle and then we went race to the restaurant. But it was that, I'll tell you what though, my learning from that was like, Jeremy was always thinking about every little detail because you just never know. I mean, if he'd have been the world's greatest keeper and we'd sold him for 20 million, that would have been actually quite yeah. valuable. So you can't ever just give in, but likewise, you've got to be thoughtful about how you resolve them. It's like credit card roulette. It's like you're basically <laughs> playing credit card roulette, which... I've lost many, many times. Um, all right. So then the next thing, Darren, and Darren, I, Darren's busy today. I know I got to get you to your next meeting. So I, I appreciate your time on this podcast. Um, the other great thing the Academy did is they put out, they put it up on uh, the checklist, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. So they got 50 skills for Atlanta United Academy players to master whilst on lockdown. These are valuable life skills that will help you on your journey. And, and to be fair, they uh, Tony and, the, and, and, the, and his staff did an amazing job putting this together because there's some really good things on here. And, and there's a lot that I don't even know how to do. Um, and I thought, no, I mean, I love it. I tweeted it out. I mean, Faith just hammered me on this because <laughs> I was talking, I was showing her, I said, this is really cool. And she just looked at it and said, yeah, you could do with doing this. <laughs> but that made me think that. So I thought yep. three on here, I'm going to predict three on here. I don't think you could do. And I got three for you. So let me see if these, so my three for you was learn a key phrase in a foreign language. <laughs> peel three types of vegetables. I'm not sure you know three types of vegetables, yet alone. How hold on, hold on. Let me get back to the phrase in a foreign language. Key I, phrase isn't, can I have a beer? It, well, yeah. Yeah, quanta cuesta <laughs> la cerveza. No, um, no uh, uh, I know, I know it, it's funny uh, with, when Tata and, and Miggy were here, I, I always had fun with them because we would talk with like our hands and like, you know, uh, uh, and then to their credit, they learned English faster than I learned Spanish. But I, I, I think you have me on that one. I probably only know the bad words in, in all of the foreign languages. So I will, I will, and I'm not going to do Spanish. I'm going to learn something in, in like French or something like that this week. So you have my word on that one. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, that by the next podcast, peel yeah. three types of vegetables. Like I said, I don't think you even know three vegetables. Wait, what was that vegetable one? What is it? You've got to peel three types of vegetables. Oh, yeah, no chance. No chance. I can learn that. That's that's fine. That's fine. sew on a button. I can do that. I can really? actually. I can actually sew. I've learned. I've taught yeah. myself how to sew mainly because um, I did take whole mech back in the day, and I, I remembered how to do it because um, it was an easy class, so I took it. And so I do. I can sew, and there have been times in the hotel when I've had to, you know, sew the the button back on. So I, I'm. I'm. You got me. I got you on that one. Um, I also, for my three, I also said, sew a button. <laughs> yeah, no, well, I think that's <laughs> one that I might have to work on before the next podcast then. That, I'll take that challenge on. This one, um, I think you might can do, but I have a lot of issues with it. I, I, I probably don't do it well, but I had hang a picture on a wall. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, <laughs> I'm hopeless at DIY, like genuinely <laughs> terrible. So I've never hung see, a picture up. My TV back here is like completely crooked. If you can tell when I tried to hang yeah. it like myself on the bracket and my wife hammers me for it every day. Well, my limit I, is the step and repeat. 
It's just masking tape. <laughs> That's about the limit of my. <laughs> and then my last one I have for you is change a bike tire. <laughs> Now, you see, that's where you, you made a mistake. You made a bloomer there, Mr. Moore, because I'm from England, Cambridge, the land of bicycling. Oh, yeah. It's that's many right. a tyre. That's right. That's yeah, right. Yeah, no, no. So, so here's the thing, then. So there's two. I will do then. I'm going to hang a picture up, and I'll sew a button by the next podcast. You've got to peel. So Laura's going to get you to peel three types of vegetable do it and um, learn a key phrase. <laughs> I'll sell. I'll make some fresh peeled vegetables for Easter Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think, um, you know, like I said, um, wishing everyone well. Do uh, you have a, um, what, what are you, what do you got? What are you doing this weekend that you, you're going to get out and are you going to try to get out in the weather or are you going to try to just stay cooped up? Any, and you got to get the, well, no, I'm going to get the boys training for the uh, uh, TPL. TPL, obviously. Yeah. So we'll, uh, I'll work on that. Um, have you have you thought of any how many new sports? Have you, any more PE? Any more new PE classes? So we're gonna have um, the <laughs> last weekend was I got sticks so you could play field hockey or ice hockey. Um, unfortunately, we let the twins watch a show where somebody ended up with a custard pie in their face. <laughs> so it ended up with me against Faith. Loser got a custard pie in the face made with shaving cream, and I lost. So. Again, you know, everyone's having those moments where they're like, wow, life's different now. As I sat there with a custard pie in my face, after losing a field hockey game on a Sunday, it's a new world. So I think <laughs> this weekend is going to be tennis. Nice. We haven't actually played official tennis yet. So I've got some tennis rackets and balls. So I'm going to see how they do on that. Any egg what hunt? about yourself? What are your plans? Yeah, we'll probably do an egg hunt. My kids want to do a field day too, because they didn't get to do field day at their school. So I might do the... The egg on the spoon or something like that. All right. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah. No, that's good. Well, Darren, I'm gonna I, I appreciate it. And like I said, we'll we'll um I, I, I think this worked as long as this thing <laughs> saves on my computer. <laughs> but uh I think you know this this will be our new virtual way to to get together each week and, and um like we said, any any questions you you know fans wanna know, we'll be an open book and uh you know, hope everyone stays safe. Uh, happy Easter, and, uh, you know, um, yeah, we'll see you yeah. next week on Spiked Up. Cheers, Matt. Yeah, happy Easter, everyone, and stay safe.